here in studio with CBS Sports basketball analyst Tim Doyle. Um, what the heck just happened? Well, Kentucky went Kentucky. That was a fear no of defense. everybody. No defense. Jack Golke, do you know how many two-point shots he attempted this year, this whole season? I just shot the whole year. How many two-point shots has he attempted? Like two. I mean, come on, the whole year? Okay, fine, ten. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> he shot eight twos. My point with that is he shot 23s in this game. Oh, my god! Coming into the game, you shouldn't even be able to shoot half of those. That's scouting report right there, and that's where Kentucky, you know, showed its youth and lack of discipline. Kid was fantastic. He's a Hillsdale College transfer, Division II player, and really he reminded me a lot of Travis Bader, the old Oakland shooting guard, just out there firing, and he got in a rhythm. And some of these shots were contested, but once a shooter gets going, look out. One of the great performances ever. Got me 10 threes in a game. Joined the likes of Freddie Banks, Carson Edwards most recently. Jeff Fryer was on those great Loyola Marymount teams with Bo Kimball and Hank Gathers. Uh, a game for the ages. Kentucky, my pick, Akeem, to win a national championship. Uh, they gone. They gone. This is a bracket buster as we welcome in Matt Norlander. Matt, this might not be as epic as UMBC over Virginia or FDU over Purdue, but put this into perspective. This is Kentucky, a national brand. John Calipari, a three seed against Greg Campy, who's in his 40th season at Oakland, a guy that's not even really supposed to be here, and he has defied all odds to get his team here. There are so many places we can go here. Uh, I'm going to start on Greg Campy. In his 40th season, I wrote a column about this man all of nine nights ago because his Oakland Golden Grizzlies got the automatic bid out of the Horizon League, getting there for the fourth time to the NCAA tournament since this program went D1 in the late 90s. He is a beloved figure in college basketball coaching. He has been at one school his entire career. It started D2, now it's D1, and he watches Jack Golke, who uh, the power of this tournament is undeniable, okay? Never touch the tournament again. <laughs> 68 teams, mid-major darlings, blue bloods going down, brackets up in a flame. This is not repeatable in any other area any other sport on the face of this planet it is incredible Golki became a legend we will remember this i don't care if oakland loses its next game by 40 points we will remember this game and this night for decades this is an all-time performance what Golki did and how they got pun intended how kentucky got dq'd at the end with that corner three is unbelievable and what makes it even more amazing to me is we do this to ourselves every single year there is an upset that happens that almost nobody is talking about. I did not see one person on HQ, on a podcast, on the internet that actually covers college basketball or was assigned to put a bracket out for public consumption that picked Oakland over Kentucky. We just assumed that this result would happen, that Kentucky would go, play Oakland, and move along to Saturday. It didn't happen. We got fooled again. This tournament tricks us every single year. Every year. It's unbelievable. Every single time. Early part of Thursday was just okay. Thursday night arrives, and like clockwork, the tournament goes tournament again. Congrats to Oakland. Congrats to Greg Campy. You are now the story, as of now, of this entire tournament. It's just thrilling. If I was there in the studio right now with you guys, I might be on the desk right now. It is just an unbelievable viewing experience, and uh, that arena in Pittsburgh was was absolutely on fire. 4.25% of the brackets had Oakland winning this game. 4.25%. No... So somebody gave him a chance. I mean, and sometimes I always wonder in 4.25% of those brackets, is, is that somebody who like entered like seven brackets on the site, you know? Because did anybody really believe that this would happen? Greg Campy did. I, I mean, Tim, here's a guy that seven years ago, he almost died because of an infected kidney stone. Like when you hear Matt say his players love him, in his column, he said, we want to win for you. We want to do this for you. We want to get to the tournament for you. And then the kids go out, relative unknowns on the national scene, and Jack Golke pumps in 32 points off the bench, most points ever scored against a John Calipari team.
It's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, and then you saw the pressure really get to Kentucky. They had some sloppy turnovers. Oakland left the door open. Oakland was only 13 of 23 from the free throw line. So there was opportunities. And you just felt like watching the game, at least I did. Maybe I was rooting for my bracket, Matt, but it was like, all right, if they just get the lead, they're going to be fine. But, like, DQ made that enormous three in the corner, and, frankly, the better team won. I don't think it has anything to do with luck. They made 15 of 31 threes. Golke has made 125 field goals this year. 121 of them have been threes. So when you see a scattering report like that, that just means you can't leave the guy. And uh, for a lack of discipline for Kentucky, and now John Calipari, last five NCAA games, he's won one. He's one and four. Yeah. And you look at the NBA All-Star game, it is littered with Kentucky basketball players. He's done a, a, a second-to-none job recruiting, but he has not gotten them to where they want to be. It'd be interesting to see what happens to him over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, this is uh, a program that has so much talent coming through it year after year after year, but year after year after year, they're not advancing in the tournament. Um, the last two games against seeds 14 or worse in 2022, they lost to St. Peter's in overtime. This year, they lose to 14 seed Oakland, and there's a lot of young talent, and, and maybe we just go, well, it's the inexperience. These guys are playing in their first tournament game, but it's not like Oakland is some veteran laden team into the NCAA tournament, Tim. I mean, when you look at it, what did it come down to? Was it a lack of defense for Kentucky? Was it poor coaching? Was it the pressure that got to them that they that people already penciled them into the next round? I mean, people had them in their final four. People had them winning the national championship. So all that pressure on those young kids, we talk about pressure at this time and they're 18, 19, 20, 21 year old kids and you're Jack Golke, you're 24 years old. But it's this pressure in this moment, and it seems like Kentucky keeps failing time after time. And Matt, to me, this is all about defense. You know, we worried Kentucky had so many issues this year making key stops, and in this game, they needed to make key stops. You know what they couldn't do, Matt? Make key stops. Yeah, well, okay, so I do think that is part of it. There's a lot of things here, and, and just uh, just I'll give me a couple uh, couple minutes here to, to lay this all out. In terms of the game, yeah, some of it was defense. Have to credit Oakland, though, because it came up huge with so many big shots. So some of it was defense. But you also had Antonio Reeves showing up, and then no one else really supporting him. Reeves has been the best player, but weird game for freshman Reed Shepard, who has been the best freshman in the country this season, and unfortunately, on a big stage, did not have a good performance. And most of his teammates followed suit there but in particular I think Kentucky and his fans were waiting on Reed Shepard to be able to, to kind of step up big and, and, and play well he finished Shepard did Shepard came off the bench had three points you had Ed, Justin Edwards had 10 Rob Dillingham had 10 on two of nine shooting overall Kentucky nation's best three-point shooting team going in 41.2 percent was nine of 28 from the field tonight 32 percent overall Trey Mitchell fouled out you know, DQ Cole having 12 points and hitting that three from the corner near the end, that's when you just knew it was going to be their night. And Golke, a former D2 player, I mean, how fitting that it's a former non-D1 player, just like his coach, bumping up and uh, and doing this. Now, as for Kentucky and big picture and what you guys were alluding to there before, I don't know what the future for, for will foretell, okay? But as this game was kind of going down the wire here, like the college basketball industry will now start to buzz because – Kentucky has been an underachieving team in March and kind of bigger picture for a while now under John Calipari. He does have a, a, a very, uh, there's a contract that works in his favor in terms of if they were to ever fire him, they would be paying him a lot. And I mean a lot of money. But you take a loss like this when the entire nation is watching and it is it ends in disappointing fashion, perhaps as disappointing as, as any, as the St. Peter's loss or anything else, I do think there is a chance, a real chance. I'm not saying it's a guarantee. I'm not predicting it will happen because we have to wait for these things to play out. But I do think there's a chance that John Calipari has coached his last game at Kentucky. The fan base can only take so much of this, okay? It clearly, there is something that has been wrong there. It is just not working. This is not me overreacting to one no. single game result. He, he Go has back gone and to, look uh, over not, the past four or five years, Tim. He, he, I, mean, I, 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 I get it. Heat of the moment. I, I feel the same way. Last five NCAA tournament games, they've won once. I know Cal. I really like Cal. But you look at his bio. The guy has gone to six Final Fours in his stretch, six of them, and he has half of the NBA All-Stars, so he's bringing in top-line talent. But no doubt about it, the resume speaks for itself. 
And then this was another team. I mean, they're projecting Reed Shepard, Rob Dillingham as top 10 picks. I picked them because I thought they're the best guards in the country. But there just seems to be a lack of discipline. And their defense was awful in this game. And I didn't know his contract details when Matt says they owe him a lot of money. And I think he's going to be back on the sidelines. But right now, uh, hashtag uh, Big Blue Nation, yeah. BBN, not too happy.